All right, I think we're good. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Hello, perceptionists. Welcome to Perceptionist Anonymous. I'm Emily. And I'm Christy Ann. And today we have an amazing, fantastical special guest, Nako. Welcome to the show. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for taking your time out of your day, man. I'd say you're busy, but you're probably as busy as we are, so. <laughs> Just She's kidding. a busy bee. It's so nice to have you on here. Um, for our listeners, will you tell them just like a little bit about you and the awesome new stuff you have going on, kind of stuff along those lines? Sure, yeah. Well, my name is Bill. I'm a science guy, and um, <laughs> science is cool. Oh, also, I also Scorpio. go by, yes, I'm a, Scor- I'm a Scorpio. I love short, short walks on the beach. Uh, nah, my name is Nyako Bear, and uh, I'm a musician, an activist, uh, and a uh, what else am I? I'm a, just a regular dude. Not so regular. Pretty irregular, actually. I'm an irregular person, but I'm actually regular when it comes to regularness. And um, I love to write. I'm a writer. I like to mm. farm. I like um, mm. riding bikes and surfing and being in the water. Those are some extra things. It's a lot. Nice. Yeah. So we'll, we'll start it. We'll start it with there. Okay. Is that your favorite element, the water? <laughs> One of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah for let's sure. just say it. Sure, yeah. It's pretty powerful. Like, I have actually a top four elements. <laughs> They're yeah, air and probably, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cute. Uh, I love being in the water. I'm a water bearer. That was me holding the, yeah, it was, wa- it was me holding the, the, um, the water, 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 the water baby? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'm water, water baby. That's and, some scary shit, and, actually. <laughs> yeah. I'm a bear, a bear with the water that I hold. So this is, this is how cool. it works. Nice. Thank you for coming on very much. Yeah. So <clears throat> we wanted to talk a lot today kind of about you create really impactful and spiritual music, which is right in line with a lot of what our listeners um, appreciate and are into mm. with the whole metaphysics stuff. So you have a new album coming out. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that album and what it means to you? Sure. Yeah, it's called Take Your Power Back. Um, and like most like every album I put out it's uh you know I like to look at albums as like books you know and so there's the songs or each like chapters in the book and each chapter deals with something different and so this particular book um is definitely based on I think you guys might be able to appreciate this aspect of it but it's based on like the era of my Saturn return oh yeah Um, yeah so I just turned 34 this year and you know I wasn't I'm not a very schooled astrologist however like I definitely fuck with it and you know over the years I've fallen more in love with it um and you know it's such an endless you know it's like a bottomless uh uh, field of of understanding the cosmos and like our relationship with the stars and um and you know the stars that we're born under etc so it's it's fascinating shit but like I you know I definitely don't claim to have that much knowledge around it but um Uh, when it comes to the Saturn return, you know, I can look at basically like a three-year period of my life um, where shit just went crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like shit just went crazy. (laughs) And uh, it felt as though like I had everything taken away from me um, and then left with like, you know, a few very uh, poignant pieces of my life still uh, stuck together in order to grasp onto those things and still like make my way out of the fucking dark trench that I was in, you know, holding those berries. Yeah, it was crazy. And like, you know, it's taken me that, it's taken me that entire span, you know, I mean, I would also even just suggest like the year leading up to like, whenever you might mark your Saturn return beginning, you know, is also I like a time frame. So even like, yeah, it's like four or five years of, of Heart experiences. Of our lives, man. Yo, big time. Yeah. So like, um, for those people listening, perhaps that don't understand what Saturn return is, it's essentially it's like a, it's a, it's a pivotal time in a, in a, a cycle in your cycle that um, you're essentially um, ruled by these planets that you're, you are ruled by these planets <laughs> that, uh, you know, that, that sort of cause a lot of chaos in, in, in your, in, a, in this time frame, And, mm-hmm. you know, you sort of have to hang on for dear life. Um, but you come out of it with a much stronger sense of who you are, of what you stand for, what you believe in, where you come from, what you, where you want to go. Yeah. Um, and so you just kind of got to hang on so, um, and do the work. So that was a big shadow work period of my life where uh-huh. I went into some like 
therapy and like doing therapy with my mom and like Good for um, you. and uh and um it's very challenging uh but it was also very rewarding in the sense that like you know the process that i have uh, and the gift that i have is to translate that through music so um i spent a lot of time writing about it and so we cover a lot of topics in the album itself it's you know we're talking about grief um and and taking your time to mourn um these a lot of the songs within this album also reference ceremony uh as i practice um tribal uh ceremonies of of this continent so um i i i reference like uh sweat lodge a lot in this album as well mm -hmm. and a lot of songs that had come through it um there's a song uh called is what it is on the album it actually is sort of a depiction of the uh, like an archetypal death um oh. talking about uh the, the coyote the the hayoka the sacred clown um this the death of this archetype and the and bringing in the vulture as another archetype of this the cleaner upper you know the bird that brings the spirits in and out of the world of this dimension and like um uh and uh and how important the role of that vulture is mm -hmm. in giving the spirit back to where it came from um and so uh and that song came to me in ceremony and then there was all this physical stuff that was happening as well like i i found a dead coyote and right after the ceremony and i was like oh shit you know, yeah. these, we so understand how that goes dude you know what i'm talking about yeah, yeah. so uh, that's why i'm like hey you know that's I mean? so you know. special thank you for sharing that with us not to cut yeah, you yeah, off yeah. but no, it's, it's powerful good and then you know then there's other songs like um uh even like uh in honor of the earth like uh talking about the uh the point in time when the Iroquois Confederacy was formed, um, where six nations came together and became like the first real hell of, like epic six gangsters in the Northeast. And like, and, uh, and also something fun that I just uh, have always tried to figure out how to like sneak into the songs is some of these like uh, conversations of extraterrestrial experiences, et cetera. So, uh, we're gonna bond, dude. <laughs> no. I'm ready. Oh, I feel like that's so, every episode we do is like we sneak in extraterrestrials, just wow. like under, just undertone. It's Tis fine. the season. There's a there's a lyric in "Onto the Earth" that says, uh, "Um, uh, what, what did I say? I said, uh, <laughs> hang on, let me let me, let me ask him. What did you say? Oh yeah." What are you doing? You're on camera right now. Oh this is incredible. Okay, so basically what he's trying to say is that what he said was looking for answers in triangular lights in the sky. He just yes. threw it in there. Yeah. And then uh, in the fourth door song, I actually talk about like chemtrails and shit. And I was like, yeah. uh, trails in the sky from God knows what. No one imagined that we would wake up. Oh yeah, tell it like it is, baby. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's there's powerful. Like so many um, little things in there, you know, that uh, definitely uh, bring in a very metaphysical, you know, experience that I constantly am having in my life, with ceremony involved, with just how uh, mystical the connection is between music you know, your environment, um, creation, and a willingness to be uh, a conduit for yes. stuff that comes through, you know? Yeah, well, I, I can say, at least in response to that, that we, I know that we are very grateful for what you do, and that you, you obviously have such a strong connection to your spirit, and to such a grander spirit. Not everyone, not everyone's able to do that, but a lot of people are able to appreciate it, and so, I don't know. I guess I guess I don't remember where I was going with that. I guess I'm just kind of really interested in what your daily ritual is. Do you have like a uh, a daily ritual, or do you have any sort of what's your process of spirituality? I mean, I don't really know a lot about native native um, indigenous culture. I guess. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I'll be upfront and just say like I am a total airhead. So. <laughs> Uh, so okay. like I Gemini, do most of Aquarius. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm like a, I'm like really a lot of air. So, but I'm also equally a lot of fire. So, the the 
I don't really have like I'll I'll get into these things where I like I'll do specific specific like ritualistic things like uh you know self love stuff that's like mm -hmm. you know being at home all this time now of course too it's like you know you know you do like the do the yoga do the meditation right. eat the oh, eat the phases. oatmeal you know what I'm saying <laughs> and like and then and then you know and then having to like curb there's like so much desktop work obviously for everybody right now so like you know balancing the desktop work with like the outside stuff which is really where I love to be um and where I love to spend most of my time is working on stuff outside yeah. so uh you know but then I go through phases so it's like I'll do that shit for like a couple of weeks and then I'll get bored of it and then I'm like okay what else could I do yeah, you know okay. um and, and as a fellow and, air uh, sign I relate to that <laughs> Thank you so much for validating my feelings. Oh, you're so welcome. I just feel like so excited and then I'll drop it in like five seconds and move to the next yeah, yeah. thing. I, I don't think oh. that's a nerd thing. I'm a Capricorn okay. dude and I fucking do that. But yeah. I guess, I guess yeah, I'm, fi I'm fickle it, right? though. So maybe that's what that is. So, um, I don't know. I spend a lot of time like now I spend a lot of time in the soil because I'm doing garden stuff and that's really yeah. fun getting Are to take food? care of that. What's that? Oh, what are you growing? Are you growing food? Uh, mostly, um, mostly, uh, drugs. Nah, it's all right. It's legal here too. Yeah. We're, I'm yeah. with you. They're, yeah. they're, Seven they feet to the right. Uh, no, it's actually beautiful. I don't have any, I don't have any weed growing currently, but, uh, I'm doing corn, beans, oh, squash, oh, tomatoes, garlic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, onions, green, all the green things, you. strawberries, ras raspberries, I'm interested in seeing kind of how long people hold on to their gardens. Like I know that, like I have, I have one too. We actually built it. We built a greenhouse for the first time and I feel very inspired and I feel every day I feel healthier upon waking up and having that sort of morning routine, being able to go out and feed the plants and go yeah, rub my face on them or fucking whatever, yep, <laughs> you know? Exactly. And, and I think I'm kind of curious as to how, like so everyone's growing their food right now. And I'm so inspired that that is a recurring theme in people now that everyone has like the ability to do it. They have the desire to do it. And um, I just hope, I hope that continues, man. I think yeah. that that is like the fucking answer to a lot of what we have right now, a lot of uh, the issues that we have growing on in our growing on going on in our society is that we need to have a reconnection to our food and a reconnection mm. to surviving outside of the fucking grocery store and outside of these like infrastructures that we're relying upon. Except um, if you're in Tahoe and can't I'll grow. digress. Anything. Dude, you can't. You can't. I'm so sorry. I live like half an hour away. Come down here and I got, I got lots of shit. I got lots yeah. of zucchini. My one tomato <laughs> plant that's inside is really oh. happy. <laughs> So you guys live 30 minutes apart, but yeah. it's a clear, completely different climate, obviously. Absolutely. Yeah. I live yeah. down in the valley outside of, um, on the That's other side right. of Jibs Peak, Carson City and stuff. And so we, yeah, I'm very, I'm very lucky. Um, I just moved from Arkansas. I'm from the area here. So I was living out different. there and it was like, yeah, a little different, but it was so every, I feel like there's so much life there that everything's trying to eat everything else. Like, like invisible shit, just burrowing itself into your feet. And like, it's just, it's pretty incredible. Um, so I'm happy to yeah, be back in the kind of dryer climate. It's <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I know. That's my sacred, feeling too. I was man. like, I'll stay in my high Please. mountain basin. Thank you. I'll go swim be, in my sacred lake and be fine. You'd be surprised what you adapt plant. to, dude. Yep. My one tomato plant yeah. is enough for me. Oh, yeah. I pretty, I impressed the shit out of myself with what I grew grew accustomed to, man. Tarantula is eating lizards and shit. It's pretty, yeah, it's, 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 I know it's oh, traumatic. Yeah. I know. I felt. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, anyway, so, so so in regards to so you said you like went through your Saturn return. So now on the other side of that, now this album's coming out into the world, and all of these like deep songs that came from that time is coming out. How does that relate to how you feel now in regards to that whole process? Oh, I'm over it, man. Let's go on the next thing. <laughs> I bet. I mean, I'm not it's over heavy. it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not like over it. Obviously, like I'm so happy for people to get to hear it finally, and uh, you know, but it's been. I mean, I finished recording the album in October or November, maybe December. Even. Yeah, it's been a while. And so, but you know, all the while I'm still writing. So like I have lots of new music I'm working on. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't even know when I can go tour this music at this point. So, yeah, that's um, true. but yeah, August. this is a new chapter. This is the new chapter. It was going to be a new chapter anyway, you know, but now that we're in this experience together, it's like, I um I'm in a big ob observation uh, mode of mm. how we consume things from home, and and also uh, and create 
yeah create and like i'm just thinking of, um, as a futurist i'm like consistent i'm always like thinking about oh, what's what where is this going to take us yeah yeah you know, i think that a lot of sorry i'm not trying to talk over i guess i just get excited i'm just thinking yeah and i wonder i don't know where what have you kind of learned from this at least from this quarantine like what is your perception of it in terms of like your personal relationship with it and then amongst the grander scale of it um what do you think is going on i think that it's very clear excuse my language there's a lot of dumbass people in the world yes yes Bro, there are the but you've got to feel for them you guys <laughs> that was okay, listen, three times here's the deal. this morning here's the deal the empath in me is so strong always the first thing forward now the fire part of me is like fuck this shit fuck that shit fuck. yeah, yeah. And, and that's then, what we need you know, dude and then that the other person comes in and is like now listen little knock there you need to be kind and loving and considerate <laughs> to grandma all Naco. sentient beings yeah it's like all the creatures in the world even the human beings who are dicks i'm annoyed by this assholes. already <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, I'm a little tired that. already too. <laughs> well, and I think that's, are you familiar with the concept of indigos? I mean, indigo soul vibration and the fact that the people born on this planet right now, we're here to set a tone and we're here to fucking burn down all of this indiscrepancy and all of this idiocy? lack of availability. Idiocy? Well, I hate the word idiocy. I hate thinking of it as stupid. I just feel bad for these people, dude. Like you, we're, we're all human and we're being bred into a civilization that keeps us stagnant man it keeps us complacent and i'm i'm sick of it too and but what's the answer you know what do we do yeah uh well we just have to learn how to hold it all at the same time mm -hmm. that's and that's point. the trick you got to learn to hold the uh celebration of the mm -hmm. shifting tide you can celebrate your own abundance and privilege uh that's okay um but you have to also be very realistic and rational about also holding the disparity, the struggle, the um, inequity, or excuse me, the inequality, um, and uh, have that just as much as your reality um, and not just be living, you know, some people just want to live in a bubble and be like, everything's fine. This is great. Yeah. This is great for me. Like, good, good for you. It is good for you. But, you, you know, that that's a, 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 it's not helpful for the other side of the dis this disparity of it when we don't consider it. Uh, uh, and I think the, 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 what we have to strive for to be a whole person, a whole human being, um, is being able to have that uh, ability to hold um, all of the dualities that we exist in. And in yeah. fact, there, my friend said it a word the other day, and I'm trying to remember what it was. It's, it's holding multiple truths. Uh, sure. There's a word for it. Um, but uh, being able to hold the, the multiple truths at one time is actually, I think, what the direction we need to be headed. Yeah, That's I agree with hard. that. I think um, it's difficult to be able to manage that. Like, what truths do you choose? Oh, like, hell yeah. The ones Nobody's you resonate? fucking saying it's easy, right? Like, well, no, yeah. for sure. But I'm thinking, like, how do you how do you fucking choose? And how do you decide? I know that, like, politically, I look at, I look at all these things, these dichotomies that are going on. It's like, to what extent, like, A, we live in a period of time where we can't disregard anything that comes up and we can't trust fucking anything that comes up. It's like, how do we, I, I wonder how we choose that truth outside of, I guess, living from our hearts. Well, that's up, that's up to the user, Cliche. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. As a, so as a creative, and I also am a very creative person in a lot of regards, how has this quarantine energy affected your creative process? Like you said, you're still writing and stuff. Has it, has it made it easier or has it made it more difficult? Because I've heard both sides of the coin with the mo more creatives I speak with. Like some of the authors I've talked to are like, it's the best, I've gotten more words done in a day. And then other people that's are like, I, I can't even think about cheese. <laughs> But everyone knows the moon's made out of cheese. Exactly. <laughs> right, love letters to the moon. <laughs> uh, okay, wait. So the question is, how has it affected my creativity? Yeah, your creative and your connection to, I guess, what you're creating. Hmm. Uh, it's affected it greatly. I mean, I work best under pressure, I guess, and also I work best on during times of conflict as well. Mm. Um, there's a lot to be said about how our reactions as human beings um it is no it can be noted i mean you can there's there's the personal stuff of like you know the my own personal journey the things i'm going through um being at home or like with my families and my relationships and 
you know, uh, um, and uh, sitting with all those things. And then there's like the relationship to the land. And then there's like the relationship to, you know, the communities out on one field of existence. And then there's like the broader global community. And then there's like all these things that, you know, the weight that you feel from it all. Um, and uh, and then the, the one-liners that start coming in from huh. listening to all kinds of things of like, oh, this needs to be a song. I'm like, you need to talk about that shit. That's a good you know? And um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it's great. I mean, um, if I was on tour right now, it would be a lot harder to like allow songs to come through because I'm in tour mode, which is uh, very focused and very much focused on the set and the songs at hand. And so, you know, I don't, in, in my very little spare time, I'll pick up the guitar, the, play the piano and like mess around with something, but um, it's less uh, in my face than it would be. So being at home, this has been, uh, great for me to just listen into uh what needs to be worked on what needs to be said um so it's been great it's been great for me oh, how do you cool. kind of hold that level of um how do you become not overwhelmed like you're bringing up all these different things that obviously weigh on your mind how do you kind of learn to balance those personally mm, i don't know i guess i hold it all like in my hands but i hold it out here you know oh. That's it's like oh Thank it's you. over here it's like it's it's part of me but it's like i'm not gonna yeah. like you're not in danger like, by it yeah i'm not well you know i mean to a degree i suppose but i'm not yeah. kind of trying to hold it and be consumed by it yeah. either you know and that's i guess the well, balance of it i guess it's trying that to comes maturity. Out. yeah the practice of it and that's that's due to a lot of shadow work too i'm sure good for you I'm really i'm honored to hear that um Ooh. how do you feel like your message has changed from the from the first parts of your albums to this current album? Good question. Um, uh, in some ways it hasn't changed at all. You know, it's the same hmm. voice, but um, in other ways, uh, I listened back to, so I've been playing a lot of the old stuff recently as I've been hmm. doing Sunday services on my live Instagram every Which have Sunday. been awesome. Hey, thank you so Good much. Job. What an honor. Uh, but I've been pulling out the old tracks and listening to, and then like, I'm going like, wow, oh, whoa, I fucking said that. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> like, <laughs> like some that. of the more, yeah, some of the other songs, I'm like, that's so cute, man. Like, <laughs> you're like, I wrote that shit. <laughs> you're such a, I was like, that's so like, oh, so, oh that, You were still happy then, or you were still, yeah, oh, that's before you well, met that person. I remember those days. <laughs> yeah, but like, more Aww. like it was just the, my my world view was uh mm. um you know blanketing things so much in positivity where it's like that's definitely where i lean into it's like i'm not a naturally negative person mm -hmm. uh and i always lean into things that um i lean into solutions i guess so i'm like mm. yeah there's fucking solutions man um and then you know then the, the fire will come out and i'll i'll talk some mad shade on some shit and be like oh what the fuck is all this about so i mean you know i think this album in particular is very it's, it, it, as opposed to like i mean everything's fucking deeply personal for me but um mm -hmm. you know this is just if you thought i was personal before like this is far more uh, a, a deeper look into like me as a person wow. um and uh and I mean, every album has been like, this is what I've been going through for the last like, you know, three or four years or whatever. But um, I think like in the past, the albums I had, I put together the albums based on the fact that I had a bunch of songs ready to go. I never really wrote to an album before. Uh, so I was just catching up with the other albums. I was catching up with putting songs out. I was like, oh shit, I got all these songs that I put out. So now it was like, there's only two songs on this album that weren't written. Uh, well, I guess four weren't specifically written for the album. The rest of them were written for the album. So it's very much the time frame, you know? Yeah. So with work that, that is that personal and like, especially as you're writing it out into a song, it's like your journal, basically. <laughs> how does that, how do you, I guess, how do you reconcile those like, okay, now the world gets to hear it and it no longer almost belongs to you. Like it does, but then yeah, it becomes totally. people's wedding songs and it becomes that, you know, it means something else to so many people. So how do you cope with that? Or oh, reconcile I mean, that, I guess. It's like, damn. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's like, 
I dealt with that a long time ago, to be honest. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was a long time ago I realized that um, they weren't mine anymore once I started to sing them. So wow. uh, it definitely made me mad for, like, the first couple of years when I've actually started, like, catching on that people were catching on, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was a little more selfish with it back then, you know, like, in my 20s. And so okay. now I don't even, like, think about it. You know, I just go, like... I already know everyone's meant to interpret it in their way and they're going to need it the way they need it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Um, yeah. Now I'm happy to give them away. I'm like, yeah, take it. It's all good. <laughs> You're like, yeah. if it impacts you, that's the goal. <laughs> yeah. Cause I st- also, I'll come back to the songs years and years later and it'll still affect me, you know? Yeah. Good for you. Do you have any songs that you're more like, that you're more emotionally attached to than others? I mean, I know that some people have their favorite songs for whatever reason, but like what songs have been, uh, are you most proud of? There's a song um, on this album that's coming out. It's the last song on the album. And it was the last song I wrote, actually, for, uh, going into the recording process. And um, I'm so glad I made it because it was so clearly, it was like, as it was coming through, it was like, I want to be the last song. And it <laughs> felt so like, ah, oh, this is a good way to wrap things up, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, because you are taking people on a journey if you listen to it from top to bottom or whatever. And, like, and having that, that final thing, to, the final thing to say, you know, um, I was just so, I loved it so much because it, it, it ended up being like seven and a half minutes long. I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to let it be as long as it wants to be. Yeah, exactly. I was like, I'm just going to let it be as long as I want it, it wants to be. And it said, oh, like, it's, like, it's like, I want to be on it almost even this long. And I was like, okay, Aww. big boy. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny as shit oh, but yeah it's dope because it like wraps it up in a, in a good way and it and it sort of says the theme of it is uh you can certainly shake me but you can't break me Aww. all right they give you whiplash though oh yeah my next that shit's story. happened man um i wanted something i wanted to say where when we were talking about astrology earlier something so i guess being kind of it's so stupid to say, oh, being an earth sign, I don't believe in astrology, but that's, that's how I'm going to come out and say it. But that I think a contradiction that, is fuck. I know, I know, if I can get it. But what I'm thinking is people, I was trying to make it, make it understand, make myself understand how astrology plays a part in us as people. And you're talking about your Saturn return. Saturn's actually my ruling planet. But I think of how each planet is its own conscious being and how that's like the only way that I can describe it to myself that it would make sense. So like we have this interaction, like mother earth, our planet, our personal planet has its own personality and its own specific energy as well. And it's interacting with these other fucking planets. Um, I guess that's the only way I can make it make sense to myself. Um, so on that topic, note, sorry. Yeah. No, on that <laughs> note though. So it seems no, like, I you, love that. That's good. Yeah. It seems like you channel a lot while you're creating your music or performing your music, or even just now sitting here, you were channeling. So what do you channel? I know that's profanity. like a really obscure question for people, but really it's. Uh, profanity, lots of bathroom talk. Um, boy. Like, potty, do you channel boy, beans? Boy, little little just... boy potty mouth. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think I'll probably understand more of that like in the next chapter like in my 40s probably Mm -hmm. because like right now i'm just like you know there's no for for, i don't have a relationship with like whatever entities might be present within me in that sense uh the 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 relationship i have with my guides is very different but it's like i don't ever feel like it's them talking through me necessarily uh maybe in the past they have but um but more so it's like uh it's just my own spirit you know what i'm saying like uh that's made itself at least known to me you know what i mean um my own consciousness has made itself known to me but uh but yeah like um i'm not i'm not necessarily like you know when i'm freestyle on on the piano it's like or or freestyle whatever and just even as you're saying like conversationally freestyle which is the channel itself peeking through like it's not like i it's not like i uh perceive it as being an entity outside of my own consciousness yet that's good yet yeah oh, or that's like nice. you can ask questions and hear it respond back to you you know or at least that's how do you do you have a relationship with your oh like, shit your well, ancestors actually, are these your gods what yeah i was just gonna say also that there's like there's a ton of people talking through me though 
I was just going to say, like, when I channel, it sounds like 17 people talking in my head. <laughs> like, so. Oh, yeah. Like, there are many Talking to characters. each other. I can hear that. There are many characters, but they all come back into oneness with Neko. Interesting. I guess. I don't know. There's a lot of characters that come out of me. <laughs> what kind of medication like, are you on? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. Coffee, sorry. Apparently. I'm just fucking sarcastic. <laughs> Aw, you're special. We're good. I'm so special. Um, Oh, cool. nice. So um, when you, I guess what, when you're creating your music, how much thought do you put into like the listener experience as opposed to <laughs> you're gonna expressing say, how it? How much drugs do you take? How many drugs do you take? <laughs> <laughs> you it's like I've heard Sarah Quill is really interesting. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Okay, wait, wait. Sorry, what was the actual question? It was more of like just how much thought do you put into like the listener's like spiritual experience and connection to it as opposed to just like you creating a beautiful work that's going out into the world? Oh, it's pretty rare when I think about someone else. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> if I don't feel it for me personally, then what the fuck am I even saying? You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, I might talk about someone else's perspective, I guess, but it pretty rarely it's usually, you know, uh, I think a healthy a healthy amount of narcissism is actually very important. Yeah, it's, a, it's <coughs> otherwise I'd be talking about someone else all the time. Be like, you know what? You appeal like this, and you sense that, and all this stuff. And yeah. actually, you know what? Hmm, it's all about me and my creativity. <laughs> and that's what I say. And then people be like, oh, I feel that. I'm still in it. Now it's yours. Have it. <laughs> Does that play into the way that you like design your shows then too? What do you mean? Well, as far as like creating the experience for the people in the audience or the listener of the music, even though they're your songs and they're coming forward in that way, like, do you put conscious thought of like, oh, how can I make this experience impactful in that regard, in that regards, as opposed to like the recording of the songs? Yeah, I mean, I think the per I was just talking about the structure earlier today. There's a big difference between just being a musician and not saying that's just a thing. It's just being a musician and being a performer. Right. Um, so there's absolutely excuse me a, an element that is imperative to i mean you already know the difference you go see a show and you see musicians playing you know um you know uh and then you go see a show and musicians are playing but they're also performing you know mm -hmm. um so uh yeah i mean absolutely when i when i put together a performance i put together our shows i'm thinking of like how you deliver the message how you deliver those songs how you deliver it has to be authentic, it has to be genuine, um, it has to be, uh, it already is vulnerable in the sense that you're up there doing it. Um, so I block, I mean, I have an old school theater head anyway, so like I block mm -hmm. everything as much as I possibly can. And then I have yeah. lots of moments of freestyle and shit and like places where we just organically let things happen and, you know, but I love order, you know, I love having, sure. you know, things in a certain way so that, um, the tone and like the feeling and the vibe that you're getting as an audience member you feel inclusive you feel included in it you feel like it's participatory um and you're also you know getting fucking activated by not just the performance but also the lights and like the way it's set up um and you assault your mates on stage and blah blah, blah. yep yeah. <clears throat> that's interesting um i've often heard the saying or a couple of different times it's come up that some people believe that all musicians are in effect ministers in themselves a minister i think is a highly charged word i don't particularly like it but that's been a word that's often come up uh do you resonate with that at all sure yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> what is a minister a minister well spreading the good word i suppose yeah oh that's uh, a good way to put it or an intermediary sure. yeah. i guess yeah it's yeah exactly like uh uh my Catholic childhood is like screaming at me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I oh. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I do. I, I think that that's, that's a, just a sure, that's a fair comparison. Uh, you know, a bard or a, you know, a troubadour. Oh, yeah. oh. Uh, I guess bard's the really clown. good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you have a, a certain impact you wish to have on people? Is there a certain like effect that you hope you have? I mean, I being a person that people. I just want to get everybody wet for God. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> I 
love it. God, I love that, man. You make two, the, the, so <laughs> the genderless god, the genderless god, right? Like, oh, very cool. That. I just want to get people wet for God. Damn, dude. <laughs> like that's the kind that's of gonna be, oh, that's gonna be that's gonna be our fucking right t-shirts. <laughs> wet for God, wet, perceptionist wet for anonymous. God. <laughs> we stole that shit. Sorry, buddy. We have rights to that now. <laughs> you can use it. It's all good. Oh, uh, cute. Uh, you know, I'm saying like whether that's like you know actual moisture in those like sacred areas <laughs> or like or like sweat, Aww. you know, for the spirit, yeah. you know, sweat for spirit, right? Like sweat lodge. Uh, like teen, sp- exactly teen spirit, you know, like um, uh, you know, cheerleading them on, like you got this. Um. Yeah, I just want, I guess that, does that answer the question? That was wild. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I I have a lot of jokes to make now. Like, all I can hear is some sarcastic shit coming through. But, (laughs) yeah, aw, that's that's very cool. Um, So, okay, and I guess fucking one of my last questions is, so in terms of your band name, Medicine for the People, like, what, Mm -hmm. I know that I have my own particular resonance with it, and the idea of medicine is kind of a hot word now that indigenous culture is kind of making its way back into mainstream culture or something, but Mm -hmm. what was, um, what's your kind of take on that? Why do you, why do you refer to this as that? that? Uh, Well, it was something we definitely grew into. I mean, I, uh, I took on the band name, long before the band Mm -hmm. that the first band and band that's now and yeah right uh so i kind of had it around for a long time um but uh it was one of those things that like i had it on a recording that i'd done like probably one of the first recordings around a fire back when like macbooks first came out and garage band was a thing Mm -hmm. uh and i was i was uh playing this song and then um my friend was like, yo, this is medicine for the people, man. Aww. And I listened to Here, that recording that like <laughs> over and over again because I was like, whoa, I sound so fucking funny on a recording. Who is this guy? And then I'd hear him say that shit like every time I listen to the song and it kind of stuck. <clears throat> and when it came time to like come up with some kind of name, uh, I was just like, yo, this is so tight. Medicine for the people. That's tight. I like that. And um, so I kind of just had it around for a while. But then, you know, when we actually started to tour, you know, going by Medicine for the People or whatever, it just made sense. But it wasn't until really, like, probably the last, like, four or five years that I feel like I actually marveled at at the youthful time that was when I chose to take on the name into the more mature space where I was like, oh, damn, this is actually what I said it is. Wow. Wow. Look at you, little fella. Yeah. It you means just really now. grew into it. Uh, yeah, now it's like, There's hell yeah. Hell yeah, that. medicine and music. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So one random thing that just popped into my head to ask is like, you have a very international presence that's like grown fairly recently bigger and bigger. How, what does that feel like to be able to like transcend language barriers using sound, like just music that isn't necessary it's so crazy like going to um going to like other countries and like watching them like process the vibe because i go like you know i don't know if they've you know i don't know if they're new fans if they're old fans or whatever like Mm -hmm. they speak in english or like whatever the fuck so like you know i i i observe it based off of like what you're saying it's like i just watch them just like consume it in front of me and it's like it my marvel you know like there's there's clearly like because i've talked to a lot of folks too who are like yeah i don't fucking know what you're saying but like it feels good you know what i mean <laughs> i'm like all right cool shit. shake that um, ass yeah exactly <laughs> so i'm like let's go what's up booty popping but um oh, you know they uh but then i'll you know i'll talk to folks that like understand parts of it you know um but not the fullness to it but uh mm-hmm. But uh, I guess it just goes to show, like, you know, the authenticity that does, um, uh, like, it's, it's, it's being seen and felt through, you know, either, you know, YouTube videos or just the song itself or, like, you know, the, the, the actual physical performance of things. Um, it's crazy. I mean, when Aloha Keakua first hit YouTube, the, the viral video that, that was made by a fan um, back in, like, 20. 20- 12 or whatever it was uh 
that shit was crazy because like I was getting messages from people all around the world that were like, yo, I heard your song, like, um, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, whoa, it's so crazy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fascinating. You know, music does transcend language. Yeah. Well, it's its own language. Yeah, yeah. Language of the heart, I guess. And of energy, like of energy made into sound that we can hear with our physical ears. Which is yeah. Not- yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, I don't understand we'll that at all. Them. I just love it. Oh, yeah. Well, we understand it with our hearts, probably, you know. I think yeah. of, think about the vibration and the, and the symphony that is existence as a whole. I mean, mm-hmm. the, every vibration. Have you ever, have you guys ever listened to the sound that the earth makes, like the frequency around the earth? You can Google that shit. It's pretty, it's pretty like haunting. It's kind of interesting. Um, what? Okay. Give us an example. What's it sound like? Yeah. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. I'm, I'm not, if this yeah. isn't good lighting for me. If this isn't good lighting, I, got a, I, I feel, I, got a I feel underprepared. Uh, yeah, dude, I feel like I think you're you did on great. it. Um, I think you did great. That was so oh, thanks, bro. Thank you. Uh-huh. Uh, what musicians inspire you? Like, what kind of music do you listen to that really gets you inspired, ready to write shit? Wet for God. There we go. I uh, recently have been loving Dua Lipa. I'm not gonna lie. Nice. She just makes me want. She just makes me want to dance. Is. Dance, dance, dance. She's so fun. She's just like. Uh, hmm. I'm just like, yeah, we can go out. Um, cool. That's like great quarantine together? music for like bumping up your energy in the morning. I get that. Hell yeah. yeah. I'll have to check it also, out. Also, I've been listening to, um, I've just been trying, every Sunday I like work on new cover songs, oh, which is new for me. That's cute. So I've been Aww. doing a lot of covers, but um, and through that, like I've discovered new love for like Post Malone, started mm. covering some of his songs. I was like, damn, this dude can fucking write songs. Jeez. Um, and then like, uh, I was just listening to the head and the heart this morning, um, their new album. Uh, I was listening to, um, uh, I kind of wear stuff out real quick. I feel um, the same. I do that shit too. You know I like saw like, repeat. It's uh, they got him yeah. alone a lot because I'd lose friends. I think. Yeah, it was crazy. Like I'll I'll wear shit out real quick. That's but, funny. Um. But I love, oh, Fiona Apple's new album is incredible. Oh. Ooh, I haven't heard it yet. Okay, cool. It's crazy. I mean, it's been fucking years, you know, yeah. since uh, she put an album out. But, like, mm-hmm. it was well worth the wait. Um, I got to do a show with her a couple of years ago. And, I've, you know, I've always been a big, big fan. But uh, this is very, very her. Like, she's so raw and, like, she's killing it on the piano. Um uh, there's this acoustic artist named J.P. Sachs that I was listening to recently. He put an EP out. Um, he wrote this amazing song with Julia Michaels. Um, mm-hmm. It was called If the World Was Ending. I found that last you know night and I got so excited. Oh, I know. I was like, I love it so much, uh-huh. man. It's so good. It's an acoustic music that talks about, like, I know she's fucked up, but, like, if it was going to die tomorrow, would you, like, come over and fuck? <laughs> That's what you said. I got to step on my little punk rock circle. <laughs> got to venture out into some Fiona Apple land, I think. Maybe I'll, maybe yeah. I'll give it a try. Yeah. There's like this rapper from Colorado that I really love. His name's Coda the Friend. Hmm. Um, and he's been putting stuff out during quarantine. Loving his poetry. Um, and uh, what else? Um, lots of Crosby, Stills, and Nash. And... Uh, hey. Oh, 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 yeah, and um, fucking uh, Rosalia. Woo! Damn, she's good. <laughs> nice. You guys know her music? You gotta check her out. She's insane. Okay. Yeah, I'll, write, I'll write that down. And of I mean, course, you, know, you gotta throw. You gotta write it down. You gotta. You gotta. You, gotta, you, gotta, you, gotta, you, gotta, you always gotta throw. You always gotta throw um, a little Drake in there. You know what I mean? You just gotta throw a little bit of Drake in there. Yeah, I mean, you know, a little piece, little piece of slide. Up. You know what I'm saying? That's funny. Yeah. Some mm-hmm. fucking spicy flavor you got, dude. That sounds good. Sounds yeah, like I'm all over the fucking place. It's crazy. Yeah, for sure. That's really cool. I respect that. But I mean, that's like really healthy for especially like your own like spiritual and creative process to hear things both in your genre and outside of your genre and get influenced from different sources. Absolutely. By the way, I just want to mention since I'm talking about hip hop, the weekend's new album <laughs> is fucking insane. Yeah. Why? Now I know a lot of folks, you know potentially might not understand how fucking insane he is he's just pushing such an a crazy boundary of sound 
Wow. Uh, and he's literally doing his own thing. And it's so crazy because, like, I was, you listen to his shit and you're like, he's talking obviously about some like hardcore sexual shit. And you're just like, whoa, bro. Okay, respect. But you hear like the production and the way he builds his songs. It's, it, for a songwriter, you know, I listen to it and I'm, it's like, it's like I'm just as, as entranced by him and his songwriting as I am by like, let's say, Bonnie Bear. You know, mm-hmm. like you put the two of them next to each other and the soundscapes that they create are so out there. Wow. Uh, I would never even know where to start with doing something like that. I'm just like, I do my own thing, but like, I'm hearing like the way that they build the songs and I'm like, whoa, this is, this is crazy. Like, I don't even know how the fuck you ended up doing that. That's so tight. They probably so, say yeah. the same thing about you though. I mean, to think about the, I mean, everyone has their own, like you said, landscape. I mean, don't flatter. I meant you as a general person, I guess. <laughs> no. Um, no, I just, I, cause I, everyone, the fact of being able to tune into your own soul vibration, I know that talk to a lot of people that think that each person has their own particular song, song that resonates with them and that nobody else can recreate. So nobody can, you don't have to recreate that. You can take a lot of passion from it and you can use it to translate into some weird shit on your own end. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. <laughs> right on. Cool. Yes. Yes to that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Well, that's really cool. I love all of the variation in the, the musical stylings. Yeah. I've got my, I've got my like Spotify pulled up right now. Cause I was like, what have I been listening to? Oh my <laughs> God. Uh, yeah. I listen to a lot of like fast grass at this point. This point in my life, like a lot of fast grass. I mean, so I personally like fast music. Um, for the most part, like something that really gets me inspired. And I've listened to my backgrounds a lot in punk rock and things like some classic rock and stuff. Um, but I think that moving moving to the south was really interesting because I lived there for quite a few years, and I was like, there's no like I saw all these punk bands there and there was like no environment there was no like camaraderie like and even in Tahoe even in Reno even like this area um we've been really kind of spoiled with a high level of like especially like feminine femininity and these kind of fast-paced environments um but going to the south I was like dude there's where's the party like where's where's the where's the fun at here and it's in the fucking bluegrass scene in the bluegrass scene. oh and yeah the, the fucking the the fiddle um, the banjo, the harmonica, like all these things, but like it could just, it really, it, I guess maybe because it's like my, my Irish roots or something, like my Celtic roots, I feel is really like it brings up the 1632 Scottish in me. <laughs> um, but that was so <laughs> yeah. BPM specific. That yeah, awesome. I know, right? <laughs> I'm just saying. So I think that uh, that's kind of the stuff. I'll, we'll send you, we'll send you some shit. <laughs> some, some nice banjo. <laughs> Fast <laughs> grass. I've yeah. never heard it called that either, to be totally well, honest. Well, I, I actually uh, listened welcome. to a lot of that shit when I was growing up, too, actually, because I spent uh, quite a few years in Alaska going to bluegrass festivals and shit. Oh, that's so. cool, man. Alaska. Yeah. That'd be an interesting bluegrass is topography. My Woo! Right on, so, dude. on that note, like, how do your, you obviously have indigenous roots and stuff, but um, how does your, like, roots play into your, I mean, I guess life in general, but also your creativity, but mostly just, like, your life in ceremony and everything else? Because some people really ignore yeah, their I mean, roots. They're like, I just exist, and then they move forward. True. But Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think, like, the islander in me mm. loves being on islands and loves being in the ocean and eating that kind of food and shit. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, rice and, like, you know, fish and, um, uh, like, kalo and um, fruits, fruits, uh, <laughs> um, but then like the native in me, uh, indigenous to Native America, um, fucking loves all kinds of crazy ass. Um, well, actually I think that part of me actually enjoys just being from the Pacific Northwest. Um, uh, love being in the rivers, love being in the mountains. And, um, um, but also, you know, being, uh, Latino as well because uh, my mom's Puerto Rican um, I love spicy foods and I love like you know uh, ethnic foods I love um, I'm talking about food a lot right now apparently I know I it's love, interesting uh, I mean it's a culture I mean, it's a I don't know. like I mean, the water yeah, totally. is what makes yeah, you yeah well food is like our is one of our you know uh, food food sovereignty food culture is like Languages. such a big part of our uh, you know decolonizing as well Wow. Um, and so, 
being able to understand a relationship with it and um, all that kind of stuff is like a huge part of, uh, you know, keeping the power within those, uh, those, those communities and those places. So like, I uh, feel very inspired by my heritage um, and it plays a big part into how I live my life. Wonderful. Wow, that's awesome. I heard a comedian say recently, he said, anyone, any racist motherfucker is to only, you can only eat the foods of your sh- original culture. Like white people, we don't get spices. You get fucking boiled meat and potatoes. <laughs> and then that's like, yeah, it's, that's your life. And I think, I thought it was so interesting. South America. <laughs> He's like, white, pap- white people traveled really far for some fucking spices in their life and I think about that like a lot I think um I, was, I think I probably went about bringing the whole thing up a little weird but I thought it was funny no, like, I no, it. boiled meat that potatoes dude that's it again potatoes come it. from South America so that you wouldn't even <laughs> that. Oh, shit. I love haggis that's <laughs> good, good shit I guess um, wow anyway well thank you so much for talking with us today we really genuinely appreciate your time if obviously your album's coming out this will release probably right after the album comes out so what's the name of it where can people get it how can people find you tell us sure yes well first of all thanks so much for having me on it's been a pleasure uh the album's called take your power back it's available everywhere on all platforms you can go to my website nako.com n-a-h-k-o uh you can find me on all the social platforms um except for tinder (laughs) dude you look like you looked fly as shit in that uh, E.T. blanket last night. Oh, yeah. Oh. That jazzercise. Damn, dude. Right on. Working on them glutes. <laughs> Yo, leg day every day out here. <laughs> no, the internet did you right, though. They did you right. Yeah. <laughs> they, got your, they got your good side. Uh, Fans did me right. I asked them to make memes of me, and they sent me a bunch of fucked up ones, and I loved it. I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> That's, That's good. You're like, oh, look, look at him. Um, oh, very cool. That's brave. That takes a level of brave, <laughs> bravery. Right. I like laughing at myself. <laughs> Not gonna leave, Ray. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Aww. Right on, dude. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, once again, I guess from a personal level, obviously we're big fans and we appreciate what you do. And it's interesting, like being able to have this discussion with you and then being able to like, like we've seen your shows and the impact you have on people and kind of the camaraderie that it builds. I think that's really um, transcendent and really important. So thank you. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Cool. Thank you for sharing that. Right on. Cool. Okay. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll see you guys sometime soon. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Sure. By sure. the quarantine. Come to Tahoe. Yeah. Yeah. All absolutely. right. All right. All right. I'm, I'm recording now.